What is going on, guys? It's another Toaster Tuesday. Thanks so much for stopping by the garage. Today, we are going to finally do the rear drums, and I'm going to give you a rear lip update on the box. So let's do that. You know, we turned the clocks back over the weekend, so I don't have a lot of daylight, so I wanted to go ahead and get this shot in first. And I hope it's enough daylight so you guys can see where the box currently sits. So I brought the box over to Surratt Performance Garage, and he went to work right away. I didn't even get a chance to film anything, man. We started taking the bumper off, when before I knew it, we were sawing a piece off the rear end of the bumper and trying to get the rear lip to fit. So before I go into how we made the rear lip fit, let me tell you first what my idea was to make this all work. So what was my idea to make this all work? My idea was two lips. That's right, I got a second lip here. So what I was going to do, if you guys remember, the lip, it didn't fit, okay? The lip didn't fit all the way around. So what I was gonna do was, I was going to install one lip and then cut it. And then I was gonna install the second lip and line it up with the bumper and then make it so they meet in the middle perfectly, just like the OEM piece. So here's my OEM piece to give you guys a better idea what I'm talking about. All right, so you can see the OEM piece has a slit down the middle. So that was what we were gonna go with. That was my concept, that was my idea. And Randy was like, yeah, man, that'll work. But when we got there, we actually decided, you know what, let's see if we can make the EK lip work um, without having to cut it in half uh, because it was so close. So basically what we did is we used the screws that came with the lip, these stainless steel screws, and we went around and we just started in the middle and worked our way to the perimeter of securing the lip to the actual bumper of the XB. And after uh, just a couple screws, we could see that it actually was gonna work. So the screws we set in really, really deep where they actually were coming out the other side, but that's fine because we're gonna grind them down and then fill them so that they'll no longer be seen. And it'll stay on. And so, uh, so that's what's going on right now. The, when we're all said and done, the rear bumper and lip will actually be one piece. Um, Randy got some seam sealer, or body sealer, whatever the heck the stuff's called, and it'll go in the gap between the lip and the rear bumper so that it is all one smooth piece which I'm really excited about. I talked to him over the weekend and he said he started it already, kind of like a rough look. You know, obviously he still needs to be sanded and stuff like that, but he said he's really happy the way it's gonna turn out. So I'm super stoked about that. And you know, he's got that awesome duckbill wing um, as well. So he started to kind of fill in the little, the little tiny, he started to fill in the little tiny imperfections. Um, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and give that a paint job as well. That's not just gonna be regular white. We're actually gonna do a little bit of something with that. It was his idea to trick it out. So. Uh, that should be pretty cool. So hopefully in the next week or so all that will be finished and it'll be in next week's video So let me go ahead and get this thing cleaned up I gotta get the prelude out of the garage so we get the box in here and we can finally Finally install these drums. All right guys. We got the car jacked up. We got the wheels off now We're about to take the drums off and I want to just say real quick in this video I'm actually only gonna be replacing the drums. I'm not replacing the shoes I probably should replace the shoes. I replaced the shoes like three, four years ago on this car. It was my first time ever doing any kind of drum brake uh, replacement. And man, it was a nightmare. It was a nightmare. I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, YouTube wasn't as good as it is right now. So um, there was a lot of first hand learning on my part. So I'm gonna explain to you kind of how you remove the shoes, but I'm not actually gonna be doing it. We're only replacing the drums. So let's go ahead and get the drums off. Here are your drums, okay? Um, some people like to just beat it with a hammer until it comes off, but it's really not the right way to do it. Um, there are actually two bolt holes. There's one right here, and there's one right here. And if you dig around your garage, like I have, you'll come up with like a 12 millimeter um, bolt that will actually go in here. And basically what you do is, is a series of tightening, okay? and it gets tight, you loosen it, and you go over to the other one, and what that's gonna do is it's slowly gonna back off the drum. So let me get to it, and get this thing off of here. Oh, one thing I should have started with, man, you cannot have your emergency brake on 
don't put your emergency brake on. If your emergency brake is on, you will have hella trouble trying to figure out the rear drums. Don't ask me how I know this, <laughs> but yes, you will have crazy trouble. So e-brake off, put the car in first gear or in park, whatever it is that you have, automatic or manual. But yes, do not have your emergency brake on at all during this entire installation. All right guys, so after just a couple turns um, with this bolt, this guy has broken loose. And you can see here, you know, you just go back and forth, back and forth, a couple turns here, a couple turns there, and there you go. Drum removed. All right, guys, so now is what I'm gonna kind of go over. Shoe replacement, okay, so your brake drums are gonna have two shoes, all right, one here on the left, one here on the right. Um, now, the way that you replace those is <laughs> it's pretty tricky, okay? If you really start to kind of take a look at what's going on here with a brake drum, it's kind of the same for any car, but man, there is a ton of springs and little levers and little clips that you gotta kind of get around in order to get these shoes totally off the drum. So, first thing that you do when you're about to tackle something like this is you take a ton of photos. Yes, photos, like real important close-up photos of how it looks before you disassemble it. Because believe me, this quickly falls apart once you start disassembling it. I mean, you take off basically these two screws. You got kind of one there and one there, and they're kind of weird little screws. Once you take those off, this thing practically falls apart in your hands. So, um... Yeah, make sure you take photos or at the very least do one wheel at a time. That way you have a reference point to go back to the other side and figure out what you may have missed. So now before you go ahead and tackle a drum on any car, you have to have this silly little tool. Um, this is for removing these little spring clip things here that I was telling you about earlier. Okay, and more importantly, they're for reinstalling said little spring clip things right here, okay? Um, you can find this at auto parts stores. Of course, I'll always have a link in the description if you wanna pick one up off Amazon. They're very inexpensive, but again, uh, you cannot do this job without something like this. If you can do it without something like this, comment below, let me know the tool that everybody kinda of has in their garage that will replace this tool. But trust me, when I did the drums for the first time a couple years ago, man, I did not have a tool that can do what this kind of thing does. And what it does do is you compress this spring and you turn it. And what happens is, is that little T, okay, it, which is horizontal right now, it'll go perpendicular, which will allow this spring and clip to come off. Okay, so removing these guys, this one here and this one here, that is the first hurdle that you have to kind of get over. All right, once you remove those, they're kind of loose in here. The second hurdle you have to get over is this spring up top here. Um, they hold the shoes in place up top. All right, so there's a, there, there's a piece of metal that kind of sneaks in up top there. It wraps around the e-brake adjuster, which is this spring-loaded. I'm sorry if the lighting's terrible. But you can kind of see that spring-loaded piece up there, okay? And then it clips in. Then it clips in right there to the top of the shoe on the other side. So that thing, man, that thing is a bear too because you have to grab it and kind of stretch it to <laughs> reinstall the new shoes. And man, it's not it's not easy to do. It, it takes a lot of strength. And uh, it's one of those things where... Um, you you always think it's going to snap back at you so it's a little scary as well <laughs> so yeah you got to battle that thing um that's not fun so and and meanwhile while you're battling that the the uh e-brake adjuster is just kind of it's held in place with that spring so as you're messing with that the e-brake adjuster just keeps falling out of its location where it's supposed to be it's it's really annoying um it's one of those things where you need like six hands to get it done right so that's how that all works. And then finally, finally, do you see that little horseshoe type thing right there? Yeah, you gotta bend like an ear off of that um, to get that shoe off and then reinstall it. And it's just an annoying little cheesy metal clip thing that I'm sure every car in the world that has drum brakes, you have to do that with. And again, it's just a very kind of annoying thing to deal with. 
So the last thing I want to touch on when it comes to the rear drums here is this little piston. If you look behind the drum, you'll see the brake line here. Brake line leads right to this piston. You want to inspect this piston and make sure that it's not leaking in any way because um, if it is, you're going to replace it. Um, this is obviously covered in dirt, but we don't see any kind of liquid anything anywhere around here. So I know that piston's good and uh, we just need to clean this off with some brake cleaner. Of course I'm like out of brake cleaner. <laughs> Thought I had more than I did. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that. Okay, so like I said, if you want to replace your shoes, that's how you do it. They're very inexpensive. Like a new set of shoes for your car is like $25. It's very inexpensive. And they last a really, really long time because if you don't know, like 70% of your braking is actually done with your front brakes. So your rear brakes do very little. However, they do activate the emergency brake. And my car, man, my car has had like no e-brake for a long time. There's a reason why. I don't really want to get into it. Um, let's just say when I did the, <laughs> the rear drums several years ago, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know that you had to replace the shoes and the drums. So all I did was replace the shoes, thinking that's all I needed to do. And it wasn't until later that I figured out that I <laughs> missed a big part of it. It's kind of like replacing your brake pads, but not your rotors. Um, so... Uh, so it's been a very, very long time that these brake drums have been on this car. Maybe they're OEM, I don't even know, but that's why I've been wanting to put these, these new drums on so that I actually have an e-brake. Um, so we're gonna be adjusting the e-brake at the end of the video, and it's a very important part of this. Um, but for now, I just kinda wanna show you the difference between the old drum and the new drum. All right, guys, so here's kind of the contact points of the new drum and the old drum. The way the shoes work is they, they run on the inside of the drum, okay? They, they push. When you hit your brake, they expand, and they push on the inside of that drum. So if you drag your finger on this, there is a hard core lip right there. From years and years and years of those shoes pushing against this drum and trying to make this car stop. And... Uh, over time, the drum wears away and they no longer make much contact, which is why I didn't get new shoes because I didn't think they'd actually be all that worn um, based on how well my heat brake works. So you see on the new drum, which I'll have a link down in the description if you wanna pick up a set of these, as I drag my finger on this one, there's absolutely no lip at all. So this guy's fresh, ready to get installed. All right, so I know what you guys are saying. Hey, you got a new drum here. Let's go ahead and throw it on and we'll just be finished with this. And yes, we could kind of do it that way, but it's not really the right way to do it, okay? Um, first, let's talk about my paint job here on these new drums. If you saw my last video, you know that I went ahead and painted these drums black. Then I painted a silver ring kind of around a, a already lip that's already on these kind of like drum designs, whatever. The idea is that the silver is gonna kind of pop behind my black wheels at the end of the video. We'll figure out whether or not that idea works. Um, but uh, it's just some regular black spray paint and then I use the same caliper paint, the Pour 13 caliper paint that I use on the calipers in the front of the car. I just went ahead and used to paint that ring. So, um, so anyway, getting back to the job at hand. I mentioned it earlier, your brakes, okay, they have an e-brake adjustment. Okay, um, you have a, let me rotate this here, and hopefully you can see. You see a little rotating wheel right there? Okay, so by spinning that, what we do is we extend the little arm there, pushing the shoes outward. Okay, and again, right now, as I mentioned a hundred times, right, e-brake is off. So this right now has absolutely zero adjustment on it. Okay, um, again, the reason it has zero adjustment is previous installer, me, didn't know what he was doing and had trouble putting, <laughs> had trouble reinstalling the old drums. So I just went ahead and left it totally uh, at zero, I guess you could say, and made my adjustment inside. So um, I know inside is fully adjusted, and we're gonna fix that later. But for now, what I wanna do is I wanna make some adjustments on this by spinning that little wheel there, and by doing so, I'll extend that little arm. So let me get a screwdriver and start extending that. All right, so now the way you do it 
okay, to lengthen it, right, is you take your flathead screwdriver, kind of hold it against the uh, hold it against the hub here, and I'm trying to do this one-handed as the hub spins, but come on, I might have to break it loose. Um, but it will rotate. Uh, I'm going to have to use two hands. You guys are going to have to hold on a second. Okay, so real quickly I made an adjustment. You can see that I made enough room to stick the flathead screwdriver into this little section here. And let's see if it'll work. Uh, unfortunately, no. Can't do it one-handed. Oh, there it goes. You hear it clicking? Now you may say to yourself, well, how, how much do you want to adjust this? And that's a great question because again, every time I turn that, this bracket is widening, pushing the shoes outward. So we want to keep going until our drum fits snugly on. All right, guys, I think I got kind of the perfect spot here. Um, the drum is going on, but it's not without a kind of a fight, right? There's friction. The drum is rubbing against the shoes as I install this. Now you're saying to yourself, well, that means they're going to be rubbing all the time when you're driving down the road. That's not what you want. Great point, right? But like I told you earlier, I know for a fact inside where there's a third e-brake adjustment point, I have that maxed. So we're going to loosen that up once we get this on here. So um, like I said, I'm trying to kind of find a happy medium um, as I install this drum here. So let me keep hitting it and get it on properly. All right, so we got the drum installed. I actually used a hammer and a piece of wood to gently ease it on once I couldn't do it anymore with my hands. And uh, it's on there, it's on there really good. And remember when you're putting it on, you wanna put it on evenly. So a little bit here, a little bit there, you don't wanna go too crazy. So now it's on, check this out. Remember before when it was just spinning? It was just spinning in my hand when I was trying to make the adjustment on the e-brake? Yeah, well it's, it's not going anywhere now. This thing is, it, it's as if the e-brake is on. Okay, so I'll be honest with you, it's a little tighter than I had hoped um, because the other side, although tight, is not as tight. And I'll show you what I mean here. Let me walk over to the other side and show you this one. And this one, see, I can kind of turn it. It's a little bit of a drag on it and that's kind of what I want I want a little bit of drag so I think what I might do is pop it off on the other side and then loosen that spring the e-brake spring a little bit so that I get a similar result that I have over here because I want them to be even all right so I got it back on okay took it off reinstalled okay you can see now that I can do it with one hand although it's hard it does go okay so I should have mentioned this before but since I had this thing off and I knew it would be pretty easy to remove um, I didn't mention it but you can actually adjust that e-brake kind of spring without actually even taking your wheel off so it's gonna be really hard to see but behind the drum there is a rubber cover and if you remove that cover you will have access to turn that knob um, I'm assuming it's even more annoying than doing it <laughs> from the front here. So I don't recommend it unless, you know, it's the only kind of uh, way that you have to make the adjustment. It's really kind of how you're supposed to do this if you read the book. Um, you do all this work and then you finally make your adjustments at the wheels. Um, I'm kind of doing it a different way this time and I think I'm going to have a decent result. But anyway, Yes, there is a way to access that without actually removing the drum. So anyway guys, as I'm rethinking this entire install, I'm thinking to myself that maybe I shouldn't have any drag at all on the wheels um, because when I do apply the brakes, they're going to obviously kind of expand and maybe having drag on it is a bad idea. I don't know. Um, all I know is that we're going to go inside and make the adjustment at the e-brake. <laughs> I got the wheels on. What do you guys think of the drums? I think they look pretty cool. I definitely do think they're going to help the wheels pop a little bit in the rear, just like the front have with those silver calipers. So anyway, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Should I just kept them black? Should I paint them all silver? Should I paint them pink? Let me know in the comments what you think. But now we're going to dive into the interior of the car. We're going to make an adjustment to the e-brake at the third adjustment point. 
So what you have to do is kind of take your center console apart a little bit to access the, uh, the adjustment point for the e-brake. How awesome is the backseat of the XV, my god. So comfortable, so much room. I should do a whole video on the back of the XB because it's just an awesome, awesome, awesome back seat for a vehicle, man. It's unbelievable. It's like the best part of the car. But anyway, on to the e-brake. And uh, I'm feeling better about things. I just kind of adjusted the e-brake and I think everything is right. So um, that's good. <laughs> that's good. But anyway, let me show you the adjustment point, okay? So down here, um, I removed the center console. I didn't show you how to do that. I removed the center console. It's like one bolt and two clips so sorry if i didn't show you that um, but anyway you have kind of a set screw here and an adjustment screw here you got to loosen the set screw first and then make the turns and as you're turning tightening and loosening you're basically adjusting this um, you got basically two brake cables one going to the driver's side one going to the passenger side and all we're doing is we're moving this bracket forward and back and as you can see when i pull the e-brake now watch that bracket Okay, so the bracket moves in, which is causing tension on the brakes, and everything's good now. So, um, I think the, the, the book says you're supposed to do like five to seven clicks is really the sweet spot for the adjustment. So, one, two, three, four, five. And now if we come outside, you'll see that that's not going anywhere. All right e-brake is really holding well so go back inside put the e-brake down okay no tension on the e-brake come out here and look at that spin the wheel with my hand and same over there so I think we're good man I think we're good all right guys good news absolutely no issues with the car also no noise anything weird and the e-brake is working finally finally I have an emergency brake that will actually hold my car on a very very slight incline like my driveway and thank you very much for sticking through this installation I know it kind of wasn't by the book but we got the good result at the end so that's all we can ask for let me know down in the comments what do you think of the drums let me know if you're excited about the rear lip I <laughs> mean it's gonna look awesome man I'm super stoked about it um, let me know if you're excited about the wing it's all coming soon guys Thanks so much for stopping by the garage. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe. We'll see you next week. Later, man. Bye.